Hello and welcome to today's live broadcast. My name is Abi. Series, series. Okay, so this will be episode twelve in the wisdom series. So prior to now, we've um, talked about the different aspects of the wisdom of God, and during the last episode, we talked about how. Uh, we can access the wisdom of God through the uh, gifts of the Holy Spirit. Uh, the different gifts, the utterance gifts, the um, revelatory gifts, we talked quite a lot about those and we uh, attempted to answer one or two questions. Okay, uh, so the, 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 episode, the last episode was really in answer to a question about how uh, practically we can access the wisdom of God through um, these gifts of the Holy Spirit, which the Bible calls manifestations of the Holy Spirit, right? So the other question that I'm going to attempt to answer today is the one that talks about how, um, actually, the question goes like this, and uh, parts to it. It says, um, what about people that speak in tongues without interpretation okay then the second aspect is the fact that is it really for everyone is speaking in tongues for everyone right so i'm going to start from the first question really so what about people that speak in tongues without interpretation well since we're talking about accessing the wisdom of god through um speaking in tongues then it is uh, of utmost importance for there to be a way of understanding what it is that we're speaking to God. That is the wisdom of God that we're releasing to him as mysteries. Because that's what the Bible says, that he who speaks in an unknown tongue speaks mysteries to God. All right, that's in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 2. The fact that there are, um, if you look into the scriptures, there are two ways that you know the use of speaking in tongues, how powerful it is. Okay. And then, especially in First Corinthians 14, which I believe that that's where this question <laughs> originated from, because there Paul was trying to address a situation in the Corinthian church um, in terms of private and public use of tongues. In fact, it's in the same chapter that we uh, this um, statement by Paul that says, I thank God that I speak in tongues more than all of you, which is in verse 18. But going through the whole chapter, we find out that there are two um, ways that uh, speaking in tongues can be of benefit to us. The first one is the private use of tongues, privately, you know, whereby you use speaking in tongues for your own private life. Now, I'm going to treat that secondly, because I'm going to go through the benefits of that, and that will lead me to answering the second question of, is it for everyone? Okay, so let's start with the second aspect of using the gift of tongues, which is public use of the gift of tongues. Okay, now in public, by that I mean where you are not on your own, maybe you're praying with other people, maybe two or three people, or in a, in a church gathering, a church prayer meeting and so on and so forth, right? So um, in that kind of setting, there are two ways that, you know, corporate use of tongues can be of benefit. Now, the first way is when you have corporate praying, which really can also refer back to Romans 8, 26, where it says that um, the Holy Spirit helps our infirmity in the sense that sometimes we don't know what to pray about. So the Holy Spirit helps us with groanings that we cannot understand, we cannot say in words. All right. So with that aspect, so when you're praying in, 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 in a corporate setting, um, everyone can pray in tongues on a particular topic. All right. For instance, okay, let's say we have a group of people in a prayer meeting, and then somebody who's leading the prayer meeting says, okay, now, we want us to pray for um, this particular situation, you know, 
uh, that God's will be done and so on and so forth, right? And then we know that the Bible says that the Spirit of God knows the will of God, knows the heart of God, remember? So when we know that we're all praying about this particular issue, then it is um, feasible or it is pra practical for everyone to pray in the Spirit about that issue. So we're all focused about we're focused on praying about that issue and we're all praying in tongues, all right? At some point during the praying, it then it can switch to another the other aspect of corporate use of tongues. Sometimes a message in relation to what we're praying about or something else. Remember, we talked about um, the situation in Acts 13 where uh, some past some uh, teachers and prophets got together, including Paul, and they were worshiping and fasting, and then the Holy Spirit said. So in the setting of us praying about the same thing in tongues or uh, worshiping, you know, which includes singing in tongues and so on and so forth, then the Holy Spirit can give uh, a word, all right? And that word can come either as a prophecy, which is in the language that we understand, or it can come as a tongue, understand me the Bible talks about uh, diverse tongues so there can be the release of tongues in terms of uh, a message from God that's released in a language that is not understood right now that setting will require for somebody who can interpret to be there or the person that is actually releasing that message in tongues will be able to interpret themselves do you understand? So this is very important. So there are two ways publicly where everybody is praying about the same thing. We can all pray in tongues, but when there is a message to be brought, then it can be released as either prophecy in the language that we all understand or as a tongue that has to come with interpretation. This is where the Bible refers to um, uh, the issue of when there is nobody to interpret, then let him who has the tongue keep it to himself, all right? That's what the Bible talks about, how the spirit of the prophet is submitted to the prophet, and let him keep it to himself and be talking to God, because it is not going to be of any benefit to any of the people around there. And then if you look in uh, that 1 Corinthians 14, from verse 5 to verse 12, and also from verse 16 to verse 28, Paul dealt extensively with this issue of using tongues in public. So it's more of using tongues in public that Paul was saying that it is better for you to prophesy than to speak in tongues mm. unless there is somebody there to interpret, which means that if you're prophesying, it's the same as uh, speaking in tongues and with interpretation. So both uh, settings bring the wisdom of God, which the Bible says is for edification, for exhortation and for comfort, especially for the church, because the other people there can hear what God is saying through you and be edified by it. All right. So when you speak in tongues in that public setting and you're bringing forth a message from the Lord, then there's got to be interpretation for it to be of any benefit, for it to be able to achieve the purpose of edification, exhortation and comfort. So if you want to read more about that, 1 Corinthians 14, 5 to 12, and then 16 to 28 talks more about that. So that's in the corporate setting. Now, in the private setting, right, um, speaking in tongues, like we said during the last episodes, it is one of the most powerful, you know, it's, in fact, it is the evidence of the fact that you have been endued with power. Because you are able to speak a language that you've never learned. You're speaking directly from your spirit man. The Holy Spirit gives you that utterance and then you speak. People around you may understand or they may not understand. And certainly you don't understand it. So to you, it's always a tongue, right? So unknown tongue, the Bible calls it unknown tongue. Now, what are the benefits of speaking in tongues? Because you see, sometimes if you don't know the benefits of something, it's difficult for you to really uh, appreciate that thing. It's difficult for you to be able to, um, you know, 
have motivation for going for that thing or even if you have that thing because i remember uh, when my husband and i first met he had been baptized in the holy spirit but he didn't really know the benefit of it so it was just a case of oh he spoke in tongues that day when he was baptized and that was the end of it because he had no idea what the benefits were until i, I told him about the benefits and then you know he he understood the reason or the need or the benefits of him speaking in tongues right so the same way if we, just quickly I'm not, i won't have time to really delve into it if you look in first corinthians 14 and verse 4 okay first corinthians 14 and verse 4 okay one of the most important things about speaking in tongues really is the fact that it says there uh, verse 4 he that speaks in an unknown tongue edifies himself that is builds himself up charges himself up okay spiritually in his spirit man you're strong in your spirit man you see um we all know <laughs> or sometimes we have an idea when we're strong or when we're not so strong spiritually you know when you're strong spiritually you know winds um, or storms may hit you but the way you recover from it the the way the the um the way it affects you is less when you're really strong in the spirit you're able to resist you know um the effect or the influence of that storm or to be able to ride or to be able to live remember one of the benefits of having the holy spirit come upon us is that we'll be strong jesus said acts 1 8 that you may receive power strong to be able to live the christian life so praying in tongues releasing the utterance that the holy spirit gives you edifies you charges you up makes you makes you strong all right so that's one also if you look in jude um verse 20 it talks about how we build ourselves up praying in the holy ghost that's another way of referring to praying in tongues praying in the spirit or praying in the holy ghost so you build yourself up spiritually when you pray in tongues then also uh the Bible talks about how when we pray in tongues, we refresh our souls. So you build yourself up in your spirit, man, praying in tongues. You refresh your soul. Remember, there are three parts to us. <laughs> your soul is made up of your mind, your will, and your emotions. So when you pray in tongues, you bring refreshing to your soul. In Psalm 23 and verse 3, the Bible talks about how um, he leads me, talking about the shepherd, the Lord Jesus Christ, he leads me besides the still waters. He restores my soul, my mind, my will, my emotion. So that, you know, anxiety is broken off of me. Worry, fear, those are broken off. Weariness is broken off. I am refreshed in my soul, my mind, in my will, in my emotion. So praying in tongues keeps makes that happen for you, okay? Brings refreshing to your soul, your mind, your will, your emotion. Okay, breaks off anxiety, fear, especially what's going on right now in view of the pandemic. When you pray in the spirit, that's the effect of it is broken off of your soul, of your mind, your will, your emotion. Okay. Also, if you look in uh, John chapter 7, verse 38, the Bible says that uh, they that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, out of their bellies will flow rivers of living water. In fact, this was how. God helped me to be able to <laughs> yield my tongue to be uh, to speak in tongues after I was baptized in the Holy Spirit. It says, out of their bellies will flow rivers of living, not out of their brain, <laughs> but out of their spirit man will flow rivers of living water. So it's your spirit man connecting directly to your tongue to release the wisdom of God, to release the power of God when we speak in tongues. And the Bible says that uh, he leads me beside the still waters, out of their bellies shall flow rivers of living water. So it's no wonder when you speak in tongues, you get refreshed in your soul. Also in Isaiah 28 verses 11 and 12, that actually makes it really plain. It talks about how uh, God said it is through another tongue, speaking another tongue, that he will, there will be refreshing for our souls. Okay, so that's powerful. It, it builds up, our, uh, refreshes our soul, and then our... Uh, um, 
our body, you know, when we, when we pray in tongues, remember we're yielding our tongue to the Holy Ghost to, uh, to control, basically, so that it can flow through us from our spirit man straight to our tongue by passing our mind. Because the Bible says that he who prays in an unknown tongue does not speak unto men, but unto God. His spirit is praying, but his mind does not understand. So it bypasses our mind. We're speaking directly mysteries unto God. All right. So it says there that when we pray, we yield our tongue to the Holy Spirit. So if anyone has any problem with controlling their tongue, well, maybe you should do more praying in tongues. I remember, um, you know, when you're on the road and uh, somebody comes in front of you, and then just before they get to the light, the light's about to stop, and then they zoom past the light, and then the light catches you. That used to wind me up a little bit. <laughs> so instead of saying anything negative, I just pray in tongues, man. <laughs> so that way, praying in tongues can help you to control your tongue, to discipline your tongue, really. Then secondly, also, Praying in tongues, you know, uh, helps us. I've mentioned that before. Romans 8.26. The Bible says that we have this infirmity, you know, this weakness, whereby sometimes we don't even know how to pray. Our, under, our understanding cannot cope with the intensity of the praying or the ramification of the issues around that issue we're praying about. When we are praying only in our understanding, it limits the depth of the praying, it, it, uh, it um, delays the thoroughness with which we are able to pray about that issue. So we switch to the Holy Ghost and pray in tongues, and he helps us. Romans 8, 26. And then, uh, quite relevant to what we're talking about, accessing the wisdom of God. So when we pray in tongues, we're able to access the wisdom of God. All right. First uh, Corinthians 14 and verse 2 talks about how um, he who prays, it says, For he that speaks in an unknown tongue speaks not unto men, but unto God. For no man understands him. How be it in the spirit, he speaks mysteries. Right. He's speaking mysteries unto God. Okay. Now let's read verse 14. It says, For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prays, my understanding is unfruitful. So I don't understand it. So that's why it's a tongue to me. So I'm releasing mysteries from my spirit man as the Holy Spirit is helping me releasing that mystery onto God directly about that issue. You know, a mystery is something that you don't understand. It's pretty simple. A mystery is something that you do not understand. By the time you gain an understanding, it is no longer a mystery. Now, if we go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 9 to 12. Uh, verses 9 to 12. The Bible says that I has not seen, nor ear heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things which God had prepared for them that love him. Remember? But God has revealed them to us by his spirit. So the things that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has, has he entered into the heart of men, those are the mysteries that we're talking about. But it says here that those things are revealed to us by his spirit, the spirit of God. For the spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. Verse 11, for what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is inside him, even so the things of God knows no man but the spirit of God. Verse 12, now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us, so that they cease to be mysteries. All right, so... Accessing the wisdom of God through speaking in tongues is so powerful. When we speak in tongues, we are releasing mysteries unto God. I find it particularly, you know, helpful when you're trying to find out the will of God for a particular situation. It's the same for every, in every situation, really. 
You pray in tongues, you release the mystery of God, you release, you release, you release. And then the Holy Ghost now gives you understanding, either by interpretation, which is the understanding coming directly from God unto you in the language that you understand, or uh, you just get to know that this is what you're supposed to do. Or it could be another, uh, maybe a dream or you're reading your Bible, just comes alive to you that, yes, this is what you're supposed to do. But it all stems from you praying in tongues about that situation. All right. So this is a very powerful way of accessing the wisdom of God, praying in tongues, praying in tongues, interpreting the tongues, hearing back from God the wisdom that you have released as mystery unto him by praying in tongues. I mean, how cool is that? Having a direct connection, a, 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 a hotline to heaven, to God, about whatever situation you're talking about. So this is so powerful. No wonder Paul um, said in verse 18 of that 1 Corinthians 14 that I thank God I pray in tongues more than all of you. I remember, apart from the Lord Jesus Christ, it was only Paul that said, I have finished my course. So it is so important, you know, that we do not allow ourselves to be to be um, limited by refusing this powerful tool to access the, the wisdom of God. Okay. The enemy doesn't want you to be empowered. That's why there are all these different issues, theological issues about, you know, this, uh, being baptized in the Holy Spirit, having the power of God come upon you, and so on and so forth. I mean. I mean, this is the way I see it. If I go for a, for a meal and it's a three-course meal, everything is laid out before me. Uh, I want to have a taste of all the three, except the one that is <laughs> full of calories and sugar. Anyway, I know God won't give us anything bad. So everything that's available, I want it. If God says you need it, I want it. I was desperate for, you know, the endowment with power. I went after God. I was so hungry. And the Bible says, Blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness. They shall be filled. I got filled powerfully. You know, in the same way, when we hunger, if God says you need it, then go for it. If you're aware, it's not um, encouraged. Go somewhere else. That's why the Bible says that, you know, in uh, the, the last, um, in, in, in the scriptures, it talks about how we should not despise, you know, uh, prophecies, and do not hinder speaking in tongues because these are uh, uh, avenues for accessing the wisdom of God. So if you're in an environment where it is not encouraged, then go somewhere else. Go and get yourself baptized and empowered, you know, by God, by his Holy Spirit. Okay. So now let me answer that last question where it says, is it for everyone? Again, this is referring to the public use of tongues. That question, where I think it came up in um, in chapter twelve or the fourteen. Hang on, let me see. Chapter fourteen. Yeah, I think it's chapter twelve, where it talks about how is um, does everyone speak in tongues? Does everyone prophesy? Of course not. In the public setting, is not everybody, although Paul said that, Hi, I wish that all of you can prophesy. Okay? But every, obviously everyone doesn't prophesy. And everyone doesn't speak in tongues publicly, bring a word from the Lord in tongues with interpretation publicly. But as for private use of tongues, everyone, every believer, Needs it. I've just explained to you all the, you know, at least some of the uh, benefits of speaking in tongues, building yourself up, becoming strong in your spirit, man, you know, being refreshed in your soul, no anxiety, breaking of anxiety, weariness, fear, you know, uh, uh, um, helping you to control your tongue, you know, helping you to pray as a prayer language, you know, and then a, a means for accessing the wisdom of God. So, what is the right answer for that question? Is it for everyone? I would say yes. I would say yes. It is for everyone. 
In fact, if you look in um, uh, in the Great Commission in, in Mark, and I, I know, um, in fact, I have a testimony about this. I remember that was once I met one lady at a conference. You know, it was a like a conference about uh, giving words of knowledge. And this lady hadn't been baptized in the Holy Spirit. I was just thinking, you're in a conference about giving words, bringing words of knowledge, and you have not even received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So I was asking, you know, why, why is that so? She was giving me some reasons. Oh, she thinks people show off with it and so on and so on. You know, the way the enemy can just hinder people from receiving the fullness of what God has in store for them. But I, um, I now said to her, you know, I said, look, hold on, I'm looking for that uh, mark. Excuse me, I'm looking for Mark, Gospel of Mark. Yes, I got it. So now I explained to this lady, this is my dear sister in the Lord. I said, listen, these and these and these are the benefits of you being baptized in the Holy Spirit and receiving, you know, uh, the gift of speaking in tongues, you know, being baptized in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. These and these are the benefits. Oh, and she said, no, she didn't realize it at all. I said, yes. So, so would you like to receive it? Say yes. And right then, there, in a matter of seconds, she received the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. You know, there's so many, you know, theological arguments to stop people because the enemy doesn't want us to be empowered. He doesn't have us stressed out and anxious and so on and so forth without the refreshing that the Holy Spirit has given us for our souls. You know, rather us to be weak. So that he can just you know deal with us anyhow we can't withstand him we're falling in and out of one sin or the other because of the weakness he'd rather have us be like that than have us uh, uh, be empowered by the holy ghost so that we're strong in our spirit man as we pray you know so that we're, we're you know we're refreshed in the holy ghost and so on and so forth so in mark chapter uh, 16 looking at the um, great commission from verse 15 it says and he said to them this is jesus go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature verse 16 he that believes and is baptized shall be saved but he that believes not shall be damned okay and these signs verse 17 and these signs shall follow them that believe in my name shall they cast out devils they shall speak with new tongues. So speaking in tongues is one of the signs that follow those that believe. So when I read this to this lady I was talking about, I said, really, does the Bible actually say that? I said, yes. I said, wow, then that's for her then because she's a believer. And that is, that's the way I see it as well. You know, I'm a believer. Then the Bible says if you believe, you speak in tongues. If you believe, you cast out devils, you know. So, I mean, all these things are there for us, but it's up to us. He said, they shall lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. If they drink any deadly thing, it will not hurt, hurt them. You know, if they take up serpents, it will not bite them. You know, it's not like we're going to go and be looking around and carrying serpents. <laughs> you know, um, so these are the benefits. I just want to challenge you today. If you're a believer, and for some reason, you've gotten caught up in all these theological arguments to stop you from being endued with power. You need to, you know, go to God and ask him to baptize you in the Holy Ghost and his power. The Bible says that Jesus is the one that baptizes with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Jesus said that you will receive power when that the Holy Ghost comes upon you. To live the Christian life successfully, to finish your destiny, to complete your destiny and your purpose on earth, to be a powerful witness for the Lord, we need to be endued with power. You need to be endued with power. You need to be able to speak in tongues. You need to be able to access the wisdom of God through this particular gift, which is very, very powerful. And I'm just going to leave it here today. Um, I think this is a, a nice end to this series. Um, so if you've been blessed, I want you to comment, just say something about this. You know, if you have any comments, say it. Um, also, share it, you know.
let other people be blessed by it okay um click the notification button so the next time i'm on you can know and i'm going to put it on our youtube channel which is summit s-u-m-m-i-t ministries international uk will be there so if you know anybody that can doesn't have that's not on facebook they can go and watch it there um and then when they watch it and then <laughs> like it share it subscribe and click the bell button okay i hope you've been blessed and you continue to be blessed um bible says that we should we should crave spiritual gifts that's one of the things that's allowed to crave because if you don't crave them you may not get them you know it's like you know like the man who was looking for pearls and then he found a field he found a pearl in a field he went and sold everything that he had just to be able to buy that field it's the same with spiritual gifts it's the same with spiritual gifts so father i just want to pray for everyone that watches this or uh, you know at any particular point in time that lord you will put into them a hunger and a thirst for you and for more of you in the name of jesus and those who have been baptized in the holy spirit that god you would help them to continue to stir up the gift that's on the inside of them like paul said to timothy but there's no point having a generator on the inside of you and not stirring it up no you fire it up you refire you pray in tongues pray in the holy ghost you know so father god bless everyone let your kingdom come and let your will be done father in the life of everyone that watches this thank you father in jesus name amen well i shall see you next time next week i'm going to start a series um on a uh, divine setup and uh, i'm sure you're going to be blessed by it all right so join me then next week monday starts bye for now and god bless you